kind of dove into CrossFit pretty heavily, haven't you? Um, I did. How many years ago was that? It was probably right around three years ago now. It started, um, you know, right around when I pulled the plug on everything. I was about 260-something pounds um, and was incredibly unhappy with it and decided I had to do something about it. And so it started with sort of going back to what I knew, which was like, walking, jogging, powerlifting. Um, and I lost probably like 20 or 30 pounds doing that, just sort of crash dieting in some ways and then got bored, um, and decided to look at CrossFit again and have sort of gone through a series of things since then on the like sort of modality of movement, but, uh, decided that I just needed to move and be, be healthier. Define modality for people. Modality. Uh, it's just, it's the idea of like different, uh, lanes, I guess, you know, like within filmmaking modalities would be like documentary or commercial or music video. And within, uh, fitness, you know, it could be like powerlifting, rowing, cycling, running, like different, different lanes of patterns. Uh, so you were into powerlifting like years, years ago. Yeah, I was sort of fit when I was in like high school. Um, I was into powerlifting for a little bit with my buddy Jake. I wrestled senior year of high school. Um, I did like MMA and jujitsu for a while. I deadlifted 500 pounds Dang. a few few years ago. So I've been like fit and strong before. Um, and then it's sort of just like, you know, in the in well, the You've been strong of- before, right? Not Not fit. I mean, I would, I would say I wasn't like super cardiovascularly fit, but I was, I was lean when I like moved to the Cape. Like actually when I first started my, the industry, like right before mm-hmm. I met you, I was pretty lean. Um, I probably weighed like 185, 190 pounds. And then I just sort of like <laughs> the, the further my career got, the heavier I got was sort of the way it worked out. Dive into that though. Like kind of, why do you think that happened now looking back? Uh, I think, you know, there's a number of things there. One is honestly, I think there's a certain amount of like self gratification that happens that like, as you feel successful and get given more money and stuff that you feel the need to take advantage of it. And like that came out in different ways for me, whether that was just like finding excuses to spend money, finding excuses to, you know, eat and drink and be merry sort of thing. You know, it's like that whole, that whole train of, (laughs) debauchery almost that can follow but I you know I think there was also like it was more and more just the prioritization of the work over anything whether that was DP work or YouTube videos or podcasts like I was up late at night um so you got kind of sucked into like the hustling idea yeah definitely i was just like hustling super hard you know traveling for work constantly and so it's like 4 a.m alarms eating dunkin sandwiches and lattes in the airport and like just not thinking about anything yeah and not you know and when you're you know i think you and i both done a lot of travel work it's like no one wants to eat a salad at the end of a 12 hour shoot day. You know, it's like everyone goes out and gets like fettuccine and beers and, and that's not even bad in and of itself, but when it's your lifestyle for five years or something, it just, it catches up with you eventually. Um, and so I think that's where it was like a slow progression for me, um, that I look back on that it's just like ballooned and ballooned and ballooned to where I was in this position that I didn't recognize myself, you know, and the, the the peak shameful thing to look back on is like, (laughs) that right before I pulled the plug on everything, like I, I always call it like when things got bad, it was like when everything came crashing down, I was about to potentially get divorced. Like I shut down the group. I did all this stuff. I was 260 pounds. I had freaking blonde tips because I had gotten my hair blonde at some point. It grew out. (laughs) Yeah, dude, it was a bad look. I was just struggling. And I think, but we do need a photo of that. I wasn't, I'll, 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 I'll put one in here. You can find, you can find it. But, uh, yeah. So it's like it, it, Yeah. And I think at a certain point, it's a self-fulfilling cycle, right? Because it's like you feel like shit. You don't have any friends. You're working all the time. You're tired. You want things to be bigger and better. You're getting paid a lot of money. Um, You know, because again, at this point, I'm like, what, 24, 23, something like that. I'm still young. I'm getting handed, you know, 20 grand, 30 grand in a month, which is more money than I ever thought I'd see. Right. And you don't know how to fix your relationship. You don't know how to say no to clients or communicate better. You don't know how to say no to work. So what do you do? You like 
stay up and drink is like the solution. Um, and I don't know that I ever got to where I had like a drinking problem, but I think that just like eating and drinking, like I remember going to Taco Bell at midnight and just being right. like, I feel like shit and my solution is eat three crunch wraps. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it was a coping mechanism for me. Yeah. So you touched on a lot of things there, but one thing is, you know, if you're really busy and you're always eating uh, crafty um, and traveling a lot, like there's not much to do to combat that um, the shitty intake that you're doing. Right. You can't um, outrun a bad diet. They no. Say. So you were fit in, uh, in high school. Uh, mm-hmm. You, I guess, slowly became unfit as you became well, to the outside looking in more successful. Right. Um, when you shut down the group and then kind of dove into CrossFit, were those two different things or it was just kind of like transferring your almost addictive personality to something else since you didn't have the group anymore? I think there's definitely an element of like transfer of focus, um, you know, and, and it's definitely been something that I can struggle with keeping in its own right healthy place because it, for my personality, it's easy to be obsessive about um, progress. Um, but I think for me, it was like, it was like, you know, the the internet stuff I was doing with the group and, you know, Patreon and the podcast. I had two Patreons, a podcast. Like I, I had so many things going mm-hmm. on that I was like, I need to keep paying the bills right? and I need to go like go to therapy, go to marriage counseling, get in shape, do all these things. And so it was sort of like I need time and bandwidth and that it just freed up all the time and bandwidth because it was mm-hmm. taking so many hours out of my week that it was like just by shutting it off because I was never good at slowing it down at being like, I'm just going to put boundaries on it. But when I killed it, and it's like there's no group to go check on. There's no Facebook to be on. There's You don't follow anyone on Instagram. You can't go skim Instagram. Like I had to sort of hard chop all that stuff off. Um, and then it was like, the fuck do I do with myself? Right. I might as well go walk around the neighborhood and listen to a podcast or something. Like yeah. I, But that was my experience was like I couldn't. I couldn't roll it back. I had to like chop it off and start over because right. it had just ro- spiraled out of control. Yeah. So let me ask you something. It was... And I never heard that like until now. In fact, that like you were close to getting a divorce was the personal stuff, the impetus to um, change the professional stuff. So like I was it- you needed the time to personally get your life, I mean, to put it nicely, in order. Yeah. Um, and thus you're like, oh, my God, it just hit the fan personally. I need to like chop everything off so I can get my personal life in order. Yeah, I think that was the biggest thing. Like there were there were professional factors in line too that were like, you know, I was becoming more and more aware of my sort of perception as a internet personality to be outrunning my perception as a professional and I wasn't really happy about that. Um I was aware that um you know, this thing was sort of growing and growing And that I didn't have the, that I sort of was, I felt like I was going to have to pick one or the other at some point. And I was like, I don't, this isn't what I want to do. You know, I don't want to run a Facebook group and have a podcast, at least not right now. I really like the other stuff I do. And if I have to pick one, that's what I'm going to do. But the biggest thing, yeah, I think was just like waking up and looking at myself. And I'm pretty sure there are like vlogs still up on YouTube where I'm like having a meltdown at the end. And it's just like. I can't figure out how to keep all the balls in the air. You know, the the people on Patreon are mad at me because I'm not doing enough breakdowns. The people on the Facebook group are mad at me because of this, or that, or the other thing. My wife's mad at me because I am not present ever at any point in the day. I'm mad at myself because I weigh 260 pounds. And at a certain point, it was just like, take this life raft of all these people on the internet who I don't really care what they think and no. just fucking push them off a ledge and be like, I'm going to fix my perception of myself and my wife's perception of me and my friends and family's perception of me. And I'm going to put all this other stuff back in order and keep paying the bills. And then like, if that ever comes back on the table, cool. But like, if I got to chop something off, that's the thing to go right now. Yeah, man. Okay. So, so much stuff that you just mentioned, I want to like talk about or like dive into a little bit. Okay. So for one, um, 
go and talk about the importance of uh, counseling. Now, whether it's, I don't necessarily, um, my wife and I, we do um, uh, counseling together. Um, I think it is so freaking important. I don't know what you guys do. I don't know if it was a, uh, just you and a counselor or your wife um, and you and a counselor, but I think having at least like a checkup every now and then with a counselor, just someone you can talk to is so important. And I would love for you to talk a little about that. Um, I think a lot of people either think that's a bad thing. I know for me, when I had premarital counseling, my perception of perception of counseling was you do you go to counseling when you're fucked up right and that's it's what totally, broken people do right it's like it's rehab what, exactly a thousand percent and it's not that it is right. so freaking good um it's funny like my wife and i will like do we really need to go get a checkup you know or like ah we're pretty good let's just go anyway and we go <laughs> we walk out after and we like look at each other and we're like oh yeah we needed that so i would yeah. love for you to talk about it. and it's so funny that you mentioned that and it's not where I thought this conversation was going, but talk about your experience in counseling. Cause I think some people need to hear about that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I totally agree. I had the same perception. I was super resistant to it. I, you know, I was like, look, I'm, I'm busy. I'm valuable. I don't, well, there's nothing wrong with us. I'm just busy. You know, I, I was sort of honestly a, a raging egomaniac at that point on a number of levels and just incapable of making balanced decisions. And that's part of why, you know, I think I was hurting Mandy a lot of the time. Um, but you know, the, the real story is like, we went to couples counseling, um, for a few weeks and we were on the verge of like this, just, we're just going to break this off and walk away. Um, and uh, the couples counselors were like, honestly, you guys need to go to individual therapy. Like you're so incapable of even interacting having a healthy productive conversation here that you need to just go like straighten yourselves out um and so we did um and you know we've since come back to couples therapy and had it be really helpful but i mean i think at the end of the day like the thing i would say which was a big lesson that i learned in the midst of all this is like you need people in your corner who are going to challenge you and call you on your bullshit yes. and whether that's on the industry side on the creative side on the marriage side on the whatever else I didn't have anyone like that in any part of my life really like I had sort of just in the nature of how things had played out like I was king of the castle right, right. like I was surrounded by everyone else who was saying that everything I was doing was great and so when people came up and said hey uh you know you don't seem super healthy you seem to be taking jobs you shouldn't you seem mm -hmm. to be whatever else it's like fuck you dude I'm doing great yeah um, look at my follower they, count <laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously. Check out my Patreon. I'm making, you know, whatever X amount of money on Patreon, like, and check out my day rate. Um, and that's where like, I think one of the biggest things that has changed for me is like surrounding myself with people in every aspect of my life who really know me and who I'm really honest with. Um, and whether that's fitness, like my friend, Matt, we train together all the time. Like he knows what I'm good at. He knows what I'm bad at. And he comes and watches me and is like, you suck at that. need to work on that. Right. And that's the only way I get better. And, you know, trying to cultivate that on the work side with, you know, whether it's artistic or commerce wise is valuable. So pause real quick. I think um, yeah. when people hear surround yourself, they might think it's a big group of people. Yeah. Um, to me, that's not what you're saying. And I don't think that's what you mean. I think it's, good to understand that you shouldn't let a bunch of people into your personal life even if it's certain lanes of your personal life you should be very specific and hate to use this word but strategic about it talk about like how you kind of gauge who you should let into those lanes um, to help you improve yourself because i think you also should make sure that you bring in people that are you kind of put them through a ringer almost where you you know that they're out for your best interest and they really right. care about you. So, you know, you have Matt, like you just mentioned, you have probably people on the professional side, kind of go through like your group of people that uh, you open yourself up to, to be really honest to you and why that is important. Yeah. I mean, I think first of all, it's, it's a group. I don't know that I could prescribe a group size. Um, I think there's, there's like for the culture we grew up in, there's probably some sort of joke to like Jesus having 11 disciples or something like that. <laughs> but I think that any more than that's too many. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that like, 
the couple key things that I look at are all the people who I value the most in those relationships are people who have not even don't have anything to gain, but they, they definitely aren't doing it for themselves. You know, they're all people who have their own things. Like Matt has, has nothing to get out of me. He's not someone I'm paying to be my coach. And, right. and that, that could be fine too. Like, and I'm, so I don't mean to like, cause I, you know, theoretically my, my therapist is someone who I pay, but like he has a different reason to have no motivation to lie to me. Right. right. And so that's where like the people on Instagram, are never going to be honest about work-life balance with me because they right. want me to just do that. You know, um, my therapist has no reason to tell me, you know, things I, I want to hear. Um, I mean, you could say he could, but I, I trust him. So, I mean, for me, it's like therapist in general is sort of a critical foundational piece. I do something called IFS therapy. Um, I've tried a few different things and worked with a few therapists and IFS has been the single most helpful thing for me. And it took it from, you want to break that down what that means? ISF. It's, uh, I, I feel like we could really get into that and I don't know that it's worth getting into. Well, just like, what did, what does ISF mean? I guess IFS is internal family systems, I believe. Um, but the way that I would explain it is it's, it's hard to explain, and if you've never done it, it's probably sounds weird, but it has to do a lot with like connecting with all these different parts of you that can come out at play. Um, and I've experienced parts of me that, you know, part of me wants to go out and be on Instagram. Part of me wants to be at home with my wife all the time. Part of me wants to be super fit. Part of me wants to whatever. And it's like those things can flare up. You know, earlier this year, I had a part of me that was giving me a ton of anxiety in client meetings. Um, and was just really nervous about someone thought of me, how I was communicating, whatever else. And like therapy was an opportunity to dig into that feeling and see where it came from and not just see where it came from. Cause I did therapy before that was like, Oh, it's cause your dad left when you were young. And it's like, yeah, I fucking knew that. Thanks. <laughs> like, but to actually connect and heal those things in a way that that pattern doesn't play out again, you know, it. it's sort of an opportunity to shift those patterns. Um, And so, you know, that can be everything from the pattern of eating when you're stressed to lashing out verbally at your wife when, you know, whatever happens, like all all the different weird dysfunctional patterns that we can have. So ISF, so what are your foundations? You got, you got Matt, you got your counselor. Yeah, talk about I would more. say recently, um, I've been really thankful for really over the last year, but especially recently, my buddy, uh, Chris Vandenberg is another person who's in that inner circle, uh, on the work side. And I would say, especially on the business side, he's someone who, you know, I would say is ahead of me in a lot of ways on the business journey of things. And so he's the kind of guy who I come to and I go like, <laughs> I want to blow this client's brains off for this email right now. Like, what should I actually say? Or this is what I want to quote them. Is this fair? Uh, they've, I, you know, I'm inclined to walk. Is that the right decision? And, you know, a lot of times someone's not going to be able to tell you if it's the right decision, but it's a good sounding board. And he's also the kind of person who, you know, empathizes. We're able to have that conversation about like, I really want to be with my kid or my wife. Someone just offered me $5,000 to be gone on their birthday. What do you do? Right. Because a lot of people in life don't get that. You know, like most people we know have never been put in that position. And I think it's easy to isolate and just go into ourselves in that position. Um, And it's helpful to have people who you can take that to, who know you, who know the situation and who can make hopefully a fair decision on, you know, maybe this is the time that you should say, Hey babe, I'm really sorry. I got to miss your birthday, but this is a really big deal. Or maybe you're fine. The job's not that important. The client's not that important. You should say no and be there for your family. Like, but having people who can, who you trust to help you make those decisions, because my experience is that on my own, I suck at making those decisions. Right. Yeah. For me, um, I think just specifically speaking to like, the leaving on birthdays or family events when because like a lot of things in our industry are so last minute especially if you're freelance and um i think it's why counseling is important is like um knowing how to communicate with people is like the key (laughs) i think both uh personal and uh commercial success you know making sure people understand your ideas making sure you can communicate well on set all that's great so if you're doing couples counseling, understanding like how the other person receives your communication is very important. So when you have those decisions to make, you can then actually have a conversation because not for me and in that 
specific scenario, like I'll have just a conversation with Julia and kind of feel her out, feel out like mm-hmm. how important is this family and get together to you? This job has these like, this is why I would like to do it. Or I'm kind of, it, you know, wishy-washy. So like learning how to communicate um, with your significant other, I think super important. Why counseling helps a right. lot of that. So that's how I, I kind of operate when I get those hard hard job offers on very important days with the family. Yeah, um, dude, it happens. And I think, to, yeah, I think you're very right. Like learning how to communicate about those things in a healthy way, because that was another big problem I had was like my experience was my desire was always, I always felt like I had a trump card, right? Like you can always pull the like, this is our vacation to Cancun. This is right. whatever. Like This keeps you know, the lights and, on. Right. And and it's like, no, it's not. You're not going to Cancun. You're just going to spend it on lenses and stay home. You yeah. know, like you're. Because then it, that is a tax write off. <laughs> right. We can always spin it. We can spin our own web of BS to justify it. Um, but be getting to a place where you're healthy enough in a relationship that you both have the room to say, honestly, this is really important to me or that's totally fine. And you trust each other and are honest about it. Because that's the other thing is like, my experience is that the when you're not straightforward about those sorts of things and you're like, oh, I'm just going to say that it's fine even though it's not, or I'm going to say that it's not a big deal even though it is, and I'm going to say no, not because I want to say no because the other person said no, and I'm going to, like, hide it. Like, that stuff blows up every time. Like, it's just not – there's there's a skill to learning how to, like, prefer another person and validate your feelings, but so much of what I was doing was just, like, either suppressing my feelings or trying to suppress someone else's feelings and not being honest, and that was just, like, leaking out in all sorts of weird places. Yeah. Um. So you – you have you have Chris Vandenberg. Mm-hmm. You have your coach. You have your have counselor. You. Oh, I didn't know I was one of them. Well, I'm one of his. That's yeah, I mean, I, I breaking I news, think guys. That, yeah, <laughs> that's why we're having these conversations, dummy. Like, <laughs> oh. oh, um, but yeah, I mean, those are probably the big ones right now, honestly. And I mean, I I tr- I've tried to learn to be as honest and transparent with people as I can in general, whether that's, you know, Instagram DMs or whatever else. But I think having people in your life who you can be honest with and say like, oh, and uh, the other important one that I I should mention that I've never been super public about is that like I have a friend, I've, I continue to go through the the 12 step program um, because of my tendency to be addictive in general towards all sorts of things. Um, And I've found that that being a part of that helps me be more balanced in decision making and energy and resource allocation in general and so i have you know a um recovering addict friend who i call all the time and and he's really helpful to me because he gets that you know like i think you need people that get those things about you because if it's someone that doesn't my experience, or even that you feel like doesn't, you're not going to listen to them ever. Right. You're going to be like, you don't get it. Like, you don't you don't have this much money on the table. You're not as good as your job as I am. You don't, you, you know, whatever else. And it, you'll, you'll wiggle out of it. And so you need to find people who, like, Chris on the money side is, like, he gets it way more than I do. And this right. other guy on the attic side gets it way more than I do. And, like, well, I think it kind of people dovetails you actually funny, put under. Funny enough into when we're talking about, like, your rates and as you go up like you have to be specific Mm. um and be very and not be generalized and i think the basis of these foundational people that hold you accountable are they're very specific in what they bring to the table so they have a lot a lot of knowledge about this lane of your life that's really beneficial and more than you more than you could probably learn your whole lifetime so you're going to bring them in after they show that like hey i really care about you as a person and you're going to just use all their knowledge to help mm-hmm. you be a better person. And that's kind of funny how those two things, I think, kind of kind of dovetail into. Uh... But so you have five people, right? Five? Uh, Ish. Kind of I mean, you, I, yeah. I've never formalized it before. Right, right. But th- those sound like those some of the, the important ones on the list. I so, mean, like Quentin's probably in that circle too, right? Probably to more on the like aesthetic side and, and whatever yeah, else. Or even sometimes side. the business side. There's, there's other people, but those are probably the most important ones that I can think of right now. So I think we started talking about this about fitness and we kind of yep. dovetailed into um, counseling, which I think is rad as shit, but whatever. Um, so you were fit in high school. 
yep. became unfit. Then there was this moment where you decided to uh, nuke the super secret film group yep. and uh, and jump into um, fitness. And what has been the benefits? Let's like not even talk about the super secret because we kind of will hash that out in future episodes and pass to death. But what has been the benefits of just really, I guess, double downing, not even double downing, but doing self-care? I'll just use it as yeah. a kind of a general statement. I mean, as a general rule, you know, I would say the the theme of all of this across any lane is that the decision to make yourself a healthier and better person will always improve every area of your life more than you expect it to. And yeah. that if you are will if you're going to choose to sit here and say I've got being a husband figured out. I've got being a DP figured out. I've got running my business figured out. I've got being healthy and eating well figured out. I've got whatever figured out. Like, that's fine. But, like, you don't even know how much better it could be. Um, and that I've found that every every lane of my life that I've chosen to get healthier in has just been exponentially rewarding. Um, so, so what are the, I mean, some of the – I'm sorry. Continue. No, I was just going to say, you know, I, people on Instagram ask specifically about like the physical and mental benefits of fitness for filmmaking, you know, and I think you could probably speak to that too. Um, but, you know, for me, it's like the one just like not getting tired is a weird, like until you've done it, it's a weird thing. Like, it, cause you, I never felt like I was tired before. But then, like, Preach. the amount of jobs that I've came on since then where people are like, hey, you want us to take the camera? Like, you need a break? And I'm like, no, nah, dude, let's, like, I'm good. Um, it, you feel a little bit like the Terminator, the first job where you realize, like, I just am in, like, go mode now. Yeah. Um, but so, I mean, I think that that helps out, like, you know, less breaks. You get stuff done faster. You're more efficient, whatever else. Um, but, you know, for me, I think more than anything, it's like, I don't do it because it helps my filmmaking. I think it does. And I think being a better husband helps my <laughs> filmmaking. But I think that like I do it because it makes me a happier, healthier person. It improves my brain. It improves the way I'm thinking. It improves the way it improves my attitude. Like you have a better attitude at the end of a day on set. If you're not your Thousand back's percent. all cracked out and whatever else. Um, and so like it affects how I interact with people. And I think that's more important than like, can you tell the difference in your handheld operating? Like, yeah. can you see it on screen? Maybe not, but you can feel it on set. And that that's what matters for me. I mean, I'll turn it back to you. Like you had a time before fitness and post fitness. Like what, what was the difference there for you? So for me, like I played soccer for a long time. So like my, my knees, um, you know, we're standing most of the day, especially if you're, you operate a lot and, when my knees and my like back started hurting, I could tell a downward decline in like either my problem solving skills or my uh, response to creative challenges and how to execute and how to work around them. And 100%. when when you start caring about yourself, also I think there's a little bit of like going to you know a counselor give some you know. Um, some things you're struggling with mentally off your plate and like you can solve those problems and that also helps um really be singular focus on set about your job and but the more the, to the point of fitness it's just i could feel like um just the end of the day like i wasn't dog tired and i couldn't feel that drop off like three hours after lunch i usually felt a drop off where it was like yeah. oh my god i can't think i can't operate my knees are screaming at me and hot tip i would just say it doesn't matter what brand they are make sure you have shoes that are really comfortable right <laughs> i wear new balances so it's like you know very uh dad shoe but i find that those are the ones that my knees and my lower extremities are just fine after a long day of just standing um and then just making sure your posture like when i made sure my posture was good especially operating right. handheld which i do a ton of um and just what's funny about crossfit is the biggest um benefit is like i can feel my like i know what my muscles are doing is is really weird but like engaging oh, it's, it's and proprioception 
It's, there we go. It's the awareness of your own body position. And this is why you went headfirst into CrossFit <laughs> addictive personality. No, I didn't even know that term. Um, but being able to like engage and disengage muscles and feeling what muscles are like really hurting and what muscles, oh, I shouldn't be using that muscle when I'm doing this move or in this position because I know it's bad for me. Um, those small things are like, it's been super helpful. And what's funny is like when you get that shit under control, then you actually have, I mean, I still need some um, kind of recuperating time when I come home after the end of the day, but I'm at least much more there than I was where I would get home and I would just be like, I just need to go to bed. Like, I can't yeah, talk, totally. I can't do anything. Um, so that's more of the like, I think it's a combination of, I feel more creative, dude. I really do like knowing that I can go the whole 12 hour or more day and be not just uh, a technician and do my job well from that perspective, but I can actually help a director and really execute his creative or her creative vision um, is like really rewarding to me. Um, and one thing I, it's just been awesome. And I don't go to like CrossFit every day because like as you, you travel, most people listening or viewing this, they travel a lot. And so I'm not like a, I know you're probably more, you know, on the, on the, on your schedule than I am. Um, but it's just been so beneficial, dude. It's been so beneficial. Yeah. Well, and that's like, I guess the, I know we got to wrap this up, but like the couple things I would say there are one, you don't have to do what I did. Like do yes. literally anything, like get up and walk a mile in the morning and put on a podcast, like just move and you know start to be slightly more mindful about what you're eating and make better choices or whatever it is like you don't have to go way off the deep end to feel the benefit you don't have to you know go to therapy eight times a week in order to start getting better but like just start looking at these things being healthier um but the, the other thing i was going to say on the fitness side is i think neurologically there's probably a argument to be made that it does make you more creative but i think for me the other part of it is it just makes you resilient. Like you get mm -hmm. mental toughness. Mm -hmm. And it, it's almost like I want to say it teaches you not to be a bitch is really what yeah. it is. Like there's something to like Don't if you're wimp. sitting on an echo bike at a CrossFit class and you're just like still – you just want to give up, right? Yeah. You just want to be done. And there's something to teaching your brain that like – you're fine. You're not going to die. Let's keep doing this. And I think that when you do that over and over and over again, when you get to that like slump in the day, it might even still be happening, but you're so used to pushing through yeah. that, that you don't even notice it anymore. Yeah. That it's like though your, your physical and mental toughness goes up so much that, you know, these little fluctuations in how you're feeling don't totally throw you off like they would have before. Yeah. I would say too, like when people hear CrossFit, like, and if you're going to look for a gym or you're going to look for any f place to go work out, if you, if you don't, um, for me, like I've been, I basically have had two CrossFit gyms and find one or find any gym that really concentrate on form is like the baseline that you need to have. Like if you go to a gym and, and the classes are all about just like throwing as much weight you can on the bar, like get the F out of there. Yeah. Like you want to have a coach and you want to have a, an environment and community that care about like form and that's more important especially if you can't go every day and you can't make insane gains like you need to have the correct form um even if it's like way less weight than the prescribed weight like just make sure your form because that is something that you can carry over into your job um and i i just would encourage people to do that and really focus on just the form aspect i agree it's totally it's all about good movement patterns but yeah anything you can do rock climbing but walking, also i think biking uh, overall this whole things. conversation is like you got to start with being honest and you have to let at least a few people into the lanes that you once you're honest and you do like self-evaluation and you're really really you know where your weaknesses are get people that you can trust a few of people not a lot like don't not a lot of people get don't them in those lanes instagram right <laughs> fuck that shit and get those people into those lanes and help them improve you and just be honest so be honest with your coach be honest with your counselor just be more honest i don't know how else yeah. to put it and it will improve i think your work your personal life or excuse me your personal life your personal life um physically and then it will bleed into your work which should be lower on the totem pole of importance so yeah
totally i feel like we'll probably have to do another episode on some of this at some point but yeah i mean so really good conversation it was all yeah this is like the stuff that i think we both enjoy talking about because once you get deep into it like you just see the benefits and it's so hard to communicate that though verbally or even visually until someone experienced it firsthand right. um but yeah dude yeah i love talking so about if you're listening and you want any specific like more dive into any of this things that we touched on, whether like counseling, personal, fitness, if you want recommendations on finding a gym, I'm sure either probably hit up Evan and with <laughs> his uh, circle, he could give you some recommendations depending on what part of the country you're in. So um, yeah, just, and also, man, if you're really out of, out of shape, don't feel bad of going to a gym. Like hundred percent, especially a good gym that cares about form that values you, values you as a human like they don't it doesn't matter like there's people in my class that are i'm not the most fit person in my class you're definitely not there's people who ask less way more than me like it's it's more welcoming than you would think i think when you first hear the word crossfit or just like structured gym whatever that may be yeah i mean and beyond that i i think that's totally true and fair but it's like uh the, the person who chooses to get up and make themselves better and be honest about the fact that they wish they were better, like, I don't care where you are, whether you're, you know, already super fit, whether you're an Oscar winning filmmaker, like whatever you're choosing to go out there and be honest about, I need help with this and I want to get better at it. Like, there's no shame in that. And there's no one that's too far gone. And if you're like, I'm, you know, addicted to a substance i'm way overweight i'm you know on the verge of divorce it's like being dishonest about it and not doing anything about it is the fastest way to destroy yeah. yourself and so showing up and being honest and like the the rude honest answer is like if you're a really overweight person in your average gym just no one even notices like no one pay, no one cares like you th you care about how you look way more than everyone else does and like you'll be fine just it, it at a certain point, it's like checking your own shame and ego and just being willing to go out there and, you know, if you're going to be on a treadmill, if you're going to go to marriage counseling, if you're going to do whatever, it's being willing to stand in front of someone else and be like, I'm going to put work in to get better because I'm not as good as I want to be at this. Yep. And that's fine. Yep. The so, end. The end. The end.